Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need so they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are visiting a land full of rivers and streams. They flow from the mighty Mount Kenya and flow down to irrigate all the Shambas around the county. We are visiting a farmer who also knows how to channel her energies. She owns a Shamba and an agrovet shop as well. So let's go and see how she manages to make them both flow sweetly. In this land of milk and honey. Let's go. Let's go. Today we are in Embu, the land of Kadan, and we are visiting Nesi. Her farm covers six acres. Her main crop is bananas. But she also has maize. There are mango and popo trees. Cows and chickens too. So, let's see how we can help. That must be her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, and there's a lot of water here. Hey, Nessie! Hey. hey, the water is enough. We can even take a shower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> karibuni, karibuni. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes. This is a lot of help? water. Can I help? Yeah, you can. Hey. Yes. Uh, Look at these veggies. Yes. Oh. Are these for consumption or for market? Uh, these are for consumption. So you uh. must be doing very well on nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. So how many cattle do you have? I have uh, two. Two. And you milk them. Yeah, ah. have, uh, two havers. All right, do they give you enough milk? Not really, not much. Mm -hmm. So I managed to sell a bit. Uh -huh. do, do you have maize? Do you have maize? I have some in the house uh -huh. and some in the chamber. Any challenges with the maize? Oh, yeah, on the storage part of it, uh -huh. sometimes you stall, uh, we will get in. Caro and? Ah, Shamba Shape Up is here and when we are here, um, we make sure that our farmers are fully shaped up. Thank you. Because we have experts. Okay. Yes. Oh. So we, before we begin work, because it's a lot of work, mm. you will kindly allow us to go and pitch our tent. Thank you. Right. Okay. 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 See you. Okay, thank you. Okay. When I hunt uh, Shamba Shape Up who are coming to my farm, First of all, I was very impressed and I was very interested to see the, the crew that I usually see on the television uh, come into my homestead. Well, Caro, let's make sure Nancy stays impressed. Tony, I can feel this will be a great ship up. And to begin, I'm going to help Nancy increase her cow's milk yield. And to do this, I've invited Stephen Kanye from CKL Africa. Kanye has bought some feed supplements to help boost the cow's productivity. But he's noticed there are some challenges with the cow shed that need to be sorted out first. If cows are not comfortable and their feed is not protected from the rain, then any other attempts to boost productivity will be a waste of effort. You have two cows that you're milking? Yeah, this one and the other one. All right. Yeah. How much milk do you get? Uh, one milking, four, four. So eight. Eight liters, eight liters per day. Yeah. The one which is in calf mm -hmm. has really gone down. All right. Why, why do you think the milk has gone down? When you look at the shed, you can see where she is having the feed, feed troughs. Yes. Mm. There's no roof. The feed is going to be rained on. Mm. You might get a fratoxin. Then when the feed gets bad, the mm. cows cannot feed. Yeah. So you're not going to get maximum production. So we need a roof here where we have the, the feed troughs. Mm -hmm. Then also you can see the floor where the cows are sleeping on. Huh? Yes. Mm. So it is not uh, leveled, it has holes. Yeah, that is why you can see the brown cow here, yeah. uh, she is muddy yeah. because she cannot be able to sleep on the sleeping area. We need to do a very good floor mm -hmm. and a very good sleeping area. Mm -hmm. And also, I've noted that uh, there are some woods that have been uh, eaten by termites. Is this area af affected by termites? Very much. They attack everything. They attack the poles. They even, uh, sometimes you find even on the stones they are building there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can even attack your houses? Yeah. Termites are very destructive. Mm -hmm. They can destroy a house in a very short time. Mm -hmm. And uh, doing a shed 
uh, maybe after a short time, mm. it is going to eat to your profit, into your profit. Mm. So you need to get rid of the termites. Mm. And also they eat even maize stovers. So the best thing is uh, prevent the termites and uh, eradicate them by using a termiticide. And the metro mm. uh, from CKL mm -hmm. will help you. You just mix metro with water, mm. then you spray all the wood. Mm -hmm. and it will be free of termites around even five years without okay. seeing termites mm -hmm. so you're going to save on your cost mm -hmm. and it is not only mm -hmm. for the cow shed even okay. your house even, the even house. The, where you are you have your house mm -hmm. you can still apply metro to spray mix 25 milliliters of metro with 20 liters of water each application will last for five years it is both That's preventative oh. and curative. Okay. Yes, and also you can mix this, then mm. you treat the termite holes. Mm. Is it used in, uh, in the field? This one is specifically... Can you use it for maybe treating maize, plants or...? No, metro is formulated for buildings. Okay. Ah, so that being said, we move on to the next step. And uh, you said you, you, you wanted like your cows to give you more milk. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. For your consumption and also for selling. For selling. Uh, yeah. Because you want money. Yes. Agribusiness is good. Okay. So what does our farmer need to do to get maximum production, maximum yield from the cows? There are quite a number of factors that you are going to consider. Mm -hmm. Today I want to discuss about uh, feeding. I can talk about the feeding. Mm -hmm. I've seen that uh, Nessie, you are feeding on uh, green nepia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. if what you are supposed to do, you are supposed to consider consider a balanced feed. Mm. We have vitamins, okay. we have carbohydrates, we have proteins, mm. and we have minerals, mm -hmm. and the fifth one is mm. water. Mm. With that, mm. uh, for the energy, mm. uh, we are going to provide napier mm. and also uh, things like hay. Mm -hmm. And for proteins, mm. you are going to provide a dairy meal, mm -hmm. and on top you are going to supplement with the kupakula. Mm. Yeah, kupakura is a protein supplement, mm -hmm. well formulated, mm. to help your cows to build on the body, increasing in weight, mm -hmm. the growth rate, and also uh, increasing the density of the milk. It has uh, something we call uh, yeast metabolite, mm. which helps in digestion. For kupakula gold, give 200 grams for each cow in the morning and 200 grams in the evening. Alternatively, mix 5 kilograms Kupakula gold into 70 kilograms dairy meal. Increase the amount of Kupakula with the increase in milk production. You are going to get more money from mm. the cows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so time we got to work. The eating area needs to have a roof to keep off the rain and stop aflatoxin contaminating the feed. Next, we are adding concrete to the floor. This helps to smooth it out and avoid any pools of mud or water that might encourage pests and diseases. And the sleeping area must be dry. Once it's cleaned and disinfected, wood shavings can be spread. It's important to keep the shade clean at all times. Wow! Great job, everyone! With Caro doing so well in the cow shed, I decided to investigate the kitchen and find out more about healthy eating. And with Nessie getting her lunch ready, my timing is perfect. To help me out, I've invited Gracie Reri, a nutritionist from the Embu County Department of Health, to join us. Grace is part of a nutrition program supported by Nutrition International, an international organization working with the government to support health and nutrition programs across the country. Grace is going to talk to us about fortified foods. That is, foods like the flour for making ugali that have extra vitamins and minerals added to keep us strong and healthy. Ah, I see Nessie has had her lunch ready. I wonder if she's eating fortified food. I'm having ugali with uh, some vegetables. Yes. Mom, is your ugali fortified? Uh, what? Exactly, exactly. What is fortified? Okay, fortification is the practice of increasing essential micronutrients in food. Micro what? Micronutrients. What are they exactly? Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. We have a various category of vitamins. 
vitamin A, minerals, we have iron, we have zinc. That is what is called vitamins and minerals, micronutrients. So fortification or fortified means what? Adding them? Yeah, increasing. Increasing them? Yeah. So, so the ugali she's having right now has got something added to it. Yeah. And that is vitamin? Vitamin A and iron and zinc. Did you know that? I didn't know. My fry is from the shops. So w when you bought the, the flour, did you check the packet for anything? No. I just asked for flour. And you are given? Yeah, and I was given. So is, is there something you'd advise our farmers when they go to buy flour from the shops or supermarket? Yeah, I would advise them to always check their packet of flour. There's that logo of fortification. And that logo comes along with another logo for cabs. They go hand in hand. For a flour to be fortified, mm -hmm. it must pass through cabs. That cabs is what? Cabs is the Kenya Bureau of Standards. Kenya Bureau of Standards. Yeah. And the fortification logo. Yeah. They go hand in hand. Yeah. You haven't seen any logo on your maize packet, have you? Maybe or you don't even check? I didn't check. I think I have, some, I have one on my phone here. Have you ever seen something like this on your... Miss Bucket. Oh, yeah. What did you think it was when you saw it first? I didn't even bother. The meaning of the logo means that this ugali that you're taking, huh? the flour had been added some nutrients in it to increase its nutritional value. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we are discussing of the additional benefits of having fortification. What are these minerals again that are added? Vitamin? We have vitamin A. That is good for what? Vitamin A is good for your eyesight, ma'am. And it improves your immunity. Uh -huh. So it helps you fight against diseases and infections. Mm -hmm. The other one is zinc. Mm -hmm. Zinc is good for the whole family, for you, for your children, for the elderly. Mm -hmm. It helps prevent growth retardation and brain retardation. Improves your immune factor in the body. We have a mineral called iron. Iron is the amount of blood in your body. So iron helps us prevent a deficiency called anemia. Anemia occurs mostly in pregnancy, in pregnant women, in children below five. It cuts across everybody. If I use my flour from the millers or from the portion meal, should, should I be worried that I'm not getting enough fortified uh, supplements? No, 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 you don't have to worry because you're getting those vitamins and minerals from other products. What other products can I get the nutrients from? We have four products which are fortified. Mm -hmm. They are called the four food vehicles. Mm -hmm. We have the fats and oils. Mm -hmm. These ones we purchase from the supermarket and the shop. Mm -hmm. Even at, when you look at that bottle, your bottle of oil, it has that fortification logo, meaning it is fortified with iron, it is fortified with vitamins. When you look at that chapati packet, that wheat flour, it is also fortified with these vitamins and minerals. So what advice would you give farmers when they go to shop for their flour next time? I would advise them to always look on that fortification logo. This will help you increase micronutrient deficiencies. Because we have anemia can cause death, that is lack of iron. Lack of vitamin A can cause loss of sight. Lack of zinc can cause growth retardation. So we need these minerals day in, day out. So I think from today we've learned something new, haven't we? Sure, yeah. Thank you so much, Grace. All right. Carol. Yes, Tony. Good question. Mm -hmm. Are you learning anything? <laughs> Did you know that termites, as small and tiny as they are, they can actually bring down a building? Oh yes, but not something as strong as I am after eating fortified foods. Still more to come, right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are in Embu and we are visiting Nessie. We have found out about benefits of eating fortified foods. And how to get rid of termites. But we also want to find out about storing maize. And running an agrovet. No time to waste. Back to work. Let's go. <laughs> Nessie is not only a successful farmer, she's a successful businesswoman as well. 
She runs her own agrovet shop in the village nearby. Animal feeds are a popular product. But in the future, she wants to build a larger shop of her own so she can keep more products and stop paying rent. So, I've asked financial expert Albert Bundi to come and give us some advice. Albert wants to take a look at Nessie's shop. If Nessie wants to get a loan, then Albert first needs to check out how her business is getting on to see if she qualifies. And I think he's impressed. What do you think, Albert? She's doing a fantastic job. Very nice. Very nice. Quite commendable. Congratulations. Thank yes. you so much. Yeah, so Nessie, how long have you had this shop? Uh, from 2016 to date, that's uh, around six years. Six years. Six years. Yeah. And things have been going on fine? Not bad. Mm. Uh, there are some challenges, mm -hmm. but it's not much. That's exactly what I want us to go talk about. Is that okay? If we yes. go to the house? Okay. Yes. All right, let's go. Okay. Having checked out the shop, Albert now wants to see Nessie's farm. This way, the bank can be sure Nessie's plans have a good chance of success. To first qualify for a business loan, Nessie will need to have an account with the bank, and ideally, a history of making deposits and withdrawals. This is why keeping records is so important. And here we are at the farm. My plans are, I would find that I aggravate. Maybe I want to own my own a new building and then I expand it. Maybe I can include other, other things uh -huh. that are not in that uncle, maybe I can put aside some hardware uh -huh. and then I proceed. You want to make a small shopping center, a Nessie small shopping center. Shopping center. Yes. Uh -huh. That's it. That is very nice. Yeah. And how do, you, how do you plan to go about this? So I think uh, by saving for us, maybe I, I can get a small Finance from mm -hmm. the banks. Mm -hmm. yes. Nessie Shopping Center. Yes. That has an <laughs> agrovet, has a hardware, uh, yeah. has a shop, a supermarket. You everything, know? everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. We know the challenges women encounter. Mm -hmm. It's not easy for women to get loans because they don't have securities. But for us, as a microfinance bank, those are the women that we support and we give them the finance. Yes. We can be able to support you and we can be able to give you loans. Mm -hmm. So I've seen your agrovets, mm -hmm. it's doing very well. As she has said, she has very big plans mm. that she can be able to do. How do you assess a person who needs some finance from you? To get finance from our bank, you have an account with us. Mm -hmm. So that account will give us your banking history. If I look at it, I can be able to see how you are, you get income and how you spend your income. Mm -hmm. That is very important. Two, you have the licenses for the mm -hmm. trading licenses for the business. Mm -hmm. You have them, which is uh, available for you. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is, I'm looking for a business which is more than six months. Already for you, you are six years. Mm -hmm. So that is already very good for you. Mm -hmm. Then when I also come to your shop, you have the record, the purchases and the sales. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? I will also look at those records then I can be able to establish your cash flows. Then from there, I come to your home. I also need to do home assessment. Then the evaluation now will guide the amount that you can be able to qualify. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we can finance you. You construct a new store, a big store, and then you can be able to grow your business. This store, probably, it might take around five, four months, six months to be, to be constructed. Mm -hmm. During the construction period, there would be a grace period such that now you embark on the construction. After you have completed the construction, now you can start servicing the loan. Okay. Then we structure the loan mm -hmm. because we know the aggravate business, the sales are not constant. Mm -hmm. During the planting season, the mm -hmm. sales are high. Yeah. During the dry season, the sales are low. Mm -hmm. So we will structure the loan to fit the cash flows, mm -hmm. such that when the sales are high, you pay higher installment. When the sales are low, you pay the low installment. Mm -hmm. I can see you're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> if you empower women, you empower the home. Yes. You empower the family. Yes. Welcome to the Shamba Shepherd Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect high rainfall in the Rift Valley, Western and Nyanza region, and very little rain in the eastern parts of Kenya. Northeastern, Upper Eastern, Lower Eastern Kenya will see no rains or very little rains of less than 5 millimeters. 
This includes Mandera, Wajia, Garissa, Marsabit, Isiolo, Machakos, Kitui, Makueni, and Kajiado. The coastal region will be dry with pockets of showers of less than 5 mm. This includes Tana River, Lamu, Kilifi, Kwale, Mombasa, and Taita Taveta. Meru and a few areas of Tharakanithi will get little to moderate rain, not exceeding 75 mm. Central Kenya expects varied amounts of rains, ranging from 5 mm to 200 mm. Moranga, Kirinyaga and Embu will see little to moderate rain of not more than 50 mm. Laikipia, Nyandarwa and Nyeri will have high amounts of rainfall of up to 200 mm. Nairobi and Kambu will receive little rains of 15 mm. North, Central and South Rift Valley will get varied amounts of rains ranging from 5 to 200 mm. West Pokot, Transoia, Marakwet, Wasingishu, Nandi, Baringo, Kericho, Nakuru, Bomet, and some parts of Narok will receive high amounts of rainfall of up to 200 mm. Western and Nyanza region will see very high amounts of rains of up to 200 mm. This includes Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega, Vihiga, Siaya, Kisumu, and South Nyanza counties. Farmers, if you intend to use your own vegetable seedlings in the coming season, now is the right time to start the seedling nursery. Prepare the planting site to a fine tilt and raise the beds to avoid flooding. Use certified seeds which are disease free and have good germination and growth. Because of the high cost of fertilizer, we encourage you to make compost manure to cut on cost by using locally available materials. In order to maintain egg production with the continual cold weather, keep your chicken warm and importantly, change or supplement their feeds with a higher than usual protein diet. Do not plant on a large scale as the current rains in some parts of the country are not the onset of the short rains. For more farming news and information, get in touch with I Shamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda, see you next week on the Shamba Shepa Farming News for Kenya. Storing crops successfully after harvest is one of the biggest challenges farmers face. So, we've asked Duncan Mukuna from Sigenta to come and give us some advice. For example, around a quarter of a farmer's maize crop is lost within six months if storage is not done correctly. So, you've been inside the store. Sure. What have you seen? What have you observed? Yes, uh, one thing I've noted in the store, you find like uh, the way the farmer is positioning his bags is uh, on a top upright way. Why should the bags be not upright? When the farmer keeps the bag upright, in upright position, you find air circulation does not uh, get within the bag very well. So the farmer needs to put the bag uh, when it's learning. Horizontally. Across, horizontally in this case. The other thing is you have to lay the ground uh, like you come with parrot, so that now you can lay the ground so that your bag does not come in contact with the floor because uh, that can lead to the moisture that is coming from the floor getting to the grain. We bring the risk of a throat toxin. Did you see any rodents in there? Yes, I, when I was going in, I found some rodents, you know, lining up and down, and you could see some damage caused within, uh, you know, along the bags. Yes. And uh, this is what we are calling the post harvest losses that uh -huh. come from the rodents and other uh, storage pests like weevils and beetles. Never store your grains with products poisonous to humans like paints or fertilizer. To store grains successfully, it has to be kept clean and dry and away from pests. So without delay, Kamau and the Shamba Shepherd team are getting to work. As the team gets to work, Duncan is going to show us how to kill weevils and other insects that might damage the seed. However, first, it is very important the seed is dry before packing, so it doesn't rot. A moisture meter is the best way to test, but Duncan has a simple alternative if there is no meter available. So any farmer can do this. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we just need a, a clean bottle, uh, which is transparent that you're able to see. We also need the salt and we have our maize. If the moisture level is above 15%, the salt will stick on the bottle. On the sides of the on bottle? On the side of the bottle. If it's below, it will not stick. So we'll demonstrate that. Okay. So we'll start uh, with uh, getting around uh, 150 to 200 uh, grams of uh, grains. We put them inside the, our grass. And then we put uh, dried salt. That's where we had to put uh, the salt in the sun. 
for it to dry. So we do that. So we have our salt. Uh, and then we seal it tightly, like that, you can see. And then we shake. We shake well. We shake well. And then we leave this for 15 minutes to see whether the salt will stick on the side of the bottle or not. Mm -hmm. So that, that will determine the moisture level ah. in this case. Yes, uh -huh. for 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yes. Okay, while Duncan gets ready to demonstrate how to prepare the seeds or cereals, Kamau has been making great progress in Nessie's storeroom. Pallets have been used to create a raised floor and the bags are being stacked horizontally and away from the walls. This allows air to circulate and keep the seeds dry. It also means there is nowhere for rodents to hide. Meanwhile, 15 minutes have passed and Duncan is ready to test for moisture in the maze. No salt is sticking to the sides of the container, so this maze is ready to bag. To do this, first Duncan has to put on protective clothing. It is essential farmers always wear protective clothing when handling chemicals as they can damage your eyes or your lungs if breathed in or cause skin damage if they get on your body. Duncan is using actelic gold dust to treat the seeds or cereals. This will kill any weevils or beetles that try and attack the seed. To use, first empty your bag of maize onto a clean dry sheet out of pollen. Use 50 grams of actelic gold for every 100 kilograms of seed. Spread it evenly across the seed, then mix well. This will protect the seed for 9 to 12 months. Once it's fully mixed, turn the seed to the bag and tie well. Remember, actelic gold dust is poisonous to insects and poisonous to people as well. It takes at least six months for the harmful chemicals to break down to a level where the seed is safe to eat. Never eat seed before six months or you could become sick. Seed for eating should be kept into a separate bag with no chemicals added. Well, that's it. Now, let's go check on the storeroom. Hey, Caro, join us. Let's check out the store. Wow, this looks great. With all these improvements, Nessie can store her maize and feel confident it will not get damaged. Storing my maize maybe 12 months will be a, a good advantage to me because at that level you will be able to sell your maize when the prices are good and so you can make uh, some money out of it. Great work everyone! Join us next week for another episode jam-packed with great advice as we shape up another shamba. On, On Shamba, shamba shape, shape Up! I love Shamba Shape Up. So uh, whatever time they feel like coming back, you'll find us in shopping center.